Make lives by keeping the weight law, weight off and adjusting to the multitudes of lifestyle changes that occur following bariatric surgery. As a mental health professional, she is passionate about helping people overcome depression, anxiety, self-sabotage, and life stressors so that they can achieve balance and sustain success through habits built, habit building. In addition to working with, in a private practice setting as a licensed psychotherapist, both in office in Alfred, Georgia, yeah. and online, Kristen is a PhD candidate in psychology, a certified Reiki master, an EFT, energy psychology, psychology practitioner, certified mindset mentor and coach, a speaker and prolific writer. Kristen is currently a contributor, contributor for the Obesity Action Coalition, Obesity Health, the Huffington Post, the Master Shaft. She is also a member of the Obesity Action Coalition, and you're also a patient. I'm also patient, yes. yes. So without further ado. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Can you guys hear me in the back? Yes. Okay, I know we just had lunch. <laughs> this is not going to be a snoozer! Yeah. Woo! Now, because I am giving a lot of practical tips. Snap, crackle, pop. Snap, crackle, pop. A lot of practical steps. I really want you guys to take notes. Hey, can't hear you. Can you hear me? No. no. whatever, but I want to let you know that up front because this is really going to benefit you after you walk out of here. So let's get started. Who's ready to get motivated? Me! Okay. So I first want to talk about what motivation is and what people think motivation is. Who can tell me? This is interactive too. Who can tell me what they think motivation is? Yell it out. Get off your ass. <laughs> okay. There you go. Inspiration. Inspiration. Whatever gets you going. Encouragement. Desire. 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 Yeah. Purpose. Okay. Purpose. Good. So it's the reason that people do things. It's the reason. It's the reason someone has for doing something, the general desire or willingness. Nosy. Nosy? <laughs> <laughs> <So> <laughs> When you're nosy, you're not motivated. You're busy in other people's business, but not your own, right? That's true. So, synonyms, enthusiasm, drive, ambition, initiative, determination. Back. So there's in, intrinsic and extrinsic, 
right? But your big why is different from your why, your little why. Your little why is like, why is this happening? Why did this happen to me? Your big why is your purpose, the real reason behind your goals, the real reason you want to get to achieve results. So we also need to evaluate the anticipated results and project it into the future. So here's something interesting. The three reasons that people don't achieve the results, that they lose motivation, a lack of confidence, a lack of focus, and a lack of direction. Okay, a lack of confidence is you don't have belief in yourself because last time nothing happened. You can't evaluate the results and project into the future because you have nothing to base it on. Because last time it didn't work for you. So you don't have the confidence or the belief in yourself to make it happen. So you have already sabotaged yourself before you ever started. Right? Who's with me? Who knows this? <laughs> All right. A lack of focus. If you don't know what you're focusing on, how are you going to get there? Right? You're not going to get there because you don't know what the plan is. Same thing for direction. If you have a lack of direction, if you don't know what to follow through on, you're not going to achieve those results. So we're going to talk about that further. What's the outcome if you shift gears or what do you really want? So this is where you really need to figure out what that big why is. So why did you guys have surgery or why are you going to have surgery? What are the reasons? Shout them out. Family. So feeling comfortable. So feeling comfortable. Baby. Take back my life. Take back control of your life. Who's with me? <laughs> so what's the outcome if you shift gears and, and then get off track? You gain weight, right? Yes. And you lose confidence. You go back to right where we started. Nobody wants to do that. That's why you're in this room. Yes. So what's the outcome if you continue and you stay on track? You realize winning. your goals. Goals, winning, success, exactly. So the reason that we don't take action, I love the just do it model. Everybody knows Nike, just do it. The reasons that we don't take action are usually emotional resistance. We don't trust ourselves. We don't believe in ourselves. Well, I don't know. If I go to the gym today, is it really going to matter? Yes. Is it really going to matter? Well, I know, yes. But the, the little the dialogue inside your head is like, oh, but the couch feels good. The bed feels good. Oh, you know what? It's going to take me 20 minutes to get there. I'm going to have to change my clothes. 20 minutes to get back. 30 minutes. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not gonna be back in time. You have thought about it way too much. Overthinking, rationalization, fear, playing it out in your head. We've gotta move the emotions from, do I wanna go for a walk, right, to I am going for a walk, right? We've gotta remove, I just don't feel like it. Has everybody experienced that? I just don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. We've got to remove the emotions. Right? In the just now. We live in a very instant gratification society. Everything is instant gratification. And so all of that time that you spend thinking, rationalizing, focusing, you're not doing anything. Nothing's happening. You could have gone to the gym. You could have walked around the neighborhood. We could have done a bunch of stuff. Meal planning. All that time. Inaction. Nothing's happening. So we got to just do it. So there's scientific evidence that says if we give ourselves longer than five seconds, between five and seven seconds, Mel Robbins wrote a book, The Five Second Rule, has nothing to do with bariatric. has to do with brain, your brain-body response. If you don't act within five seconds, your brain kills the idea. Your brain kills the idea because you thought yourself out of it. You have thought yourself out of it. So this is where, I'm not saying go from non, not being impulsive to being impulsive, but when it comes to doing something from your health, you've got to get into action very quickly. Okay, decision making, 
is very stimulating for the frontal cortex of your brain. So that, ah, uh, do I want to? Do I not want to? Am I going to think about it? Your brain's stimulated by that. Yes. Right. <laughs> so then, nothing happens. So when you take action, you experience results. And you have to make it a non-negotiable. When you make it a non-negotiable, amazing things happen. Because now, you're taking action not once, but then the next day, the next day, the next day, and so on. Using this. Five second rule. The biggest difference in people who are motivated versus unmotivated is their level of commitment. Level of commitment. How committed are you to lifestyle change? How committed are you to making this change in your life? You've seen the havoc that obesity has done on your lives, yes? Yes. And I'm there with you. My highest weight was 411 pounds. 2013, sleever. Woo -woo. <laughs> You've got to make it a non-negotiable. The difference in certainty. So we, our brains desire certainty. If we don't have certainty, well, and I, and I know that I'm gonna be safe, do I know that if I go to the gym that, I'm, that it's actually gonna do something? And a lot of times I'll tell my clients, you don't go to the gym once and become a bodybuilder. This doesn't happen. You've got to go again and again and again for you to see the results. That's just physiology. But the certainty, you start to question. Well, can I? Will I? Right? There's question. Right? Because, and I'm going to get into it. Why? Because our brain is always looking for fear. It's always going to whether that fight flight response, right? Are we safe? Is it gonna make us safe? So we've gotta shift from am I worth it to I am worth it. Say it with me. I, I am, am worth, worth it. it. All right. So the old feelings, the behaviors, they pop up. Emotional resistance sets in. So what I see is the first six months to a year after surgery, you're like, go get it, you got it, you got it, you got it. And then you're like, oh, you know, this is hard. <laughs> I got kids. I got a job. I got a spouse. I got in-laws. Somebody's sick in the hospital. I got life, man. I don't have time for that. So you start missing. But we've got to, we've got to stay committed. And we're going to talk more about that. So we've got to change the new thoughts, feelings, and behaviors because that equates to success. That equates to your success. Consistency is key. This is one of my favorite books in the whole world, also non-bariatric. Compound Effect, Darren Hardy. It's not what you do once that makes a difference. It's what you do daily that impacts your life. And what he talks about in this book is he talks about there's one guy that he puts a bar in his basement. And there's another guy who puts a gym in his basement. And in the book, he talks about how the first week that the guy who puts a bar in his basement, he's social, he has friends over, he's thinking like, I got a bar in my basement, beer! And the next guy, he has a gym in his basement, and he's like, yes, I'm going to get fit. Well, it's not what happens to them in a week that matters. It's not what happens to them in a day that matters. It's what happens to them over the course of the year as a result of their consistency. Anybody imagine what happened? So the beer guy, the bar guy, He's drinking beer. He doesn't, he's tired. He's tired. He doesn't have enough time to really go exercise. He's socializing. He's gained weight. Work is not so great. Because what has that done? It's affected his entire life. But the guy who is now walking every day on his treadmill, he has lost 30 pounds. He got a promotion at work. He shifted his life a year. That's what makes the biggest difference. Stress. Stress is what unmotivates us. So we're gonna talk about two different types of stress. Cause this, this folks is where it's really at. Cause this is where we really get hit. 
Eustress is positive stress. Distress, negative stress. Eustress. What is positive stress? Has anybody heard of positive stress? What is positive stress? Getting married! Yeah. Having a baby! Buying a house! Yay! Just as stressful. Just different. Getting a promotion. Retirement. Changing jobs. Graduation. Distress. Divorce. Death of a loved one. Loss of your job or home. Cancer diagnosis. Personal health crisis. Family member health crisis. Natural disaster. Car accident. Big difference. Okay? We're going to talk about dealing with positive stressors. Because positive stress and negative stress, we actually respond to them differently, but sometimes the physiological response is the same. So these are like the positive things that we can do because a lot of times we're prepared for positive stressors. You know when you're going to have a baby. You know when you're going to buy a house. You know when you're getting married. You know when you're retiring. Right? You know when you're graduating. You know this. You can plan for it. So what do you do in advance? Oh, I got a plan because you know we're moving, so I'm packing boxes. You plan. Your workout routine, your meal plans, you prioritize, creating time for things. You might miss a workout or two because you're packing boxes, moving stuff around. That's a workout, I know. But creating time for things that are important for you. you, you can prioritize that. You're being conscious and present. Okay, what do I need to do? Who's going to take the kids? What's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? You plan. Recognizing the, be the impact of your behaviors and your actions. So even when positive stress comes up, you might have that adrenaline rush or the fight-flight response and all of that, but it's not going to be as impactful because you can plan for it. And yes, there's going to be the... This happened, or, oh, I have to get more paperwork for closing, or they changed my date, or the wedding planner, she's not here, ah, whatever it may be. But most of those things we can plan for. The negative stressors, has anybody, has anybody actually planned for a negative stressor? Anybody ever pl planned for that? No, because it just happens. Okay, so I like to preface this with I am not a medical doctor. <laughs> but I'm going to talk to you about what happens in your body because how you work from the psychological perspective and the physiological perspective is huge, right? So we're going to talk about the psychology because it affects your physiology more than you think. So the physiological reactions... Right? So you have initial reaction. Something happens. The initial reaction... Well, let me back up. First of all, our bodies are hardwired for fear. So we, we have the fight-flight response. <laughs> hardwired for survival. So way back in the Stone Age, we had to worry about saber-toothed tigers. Right? Our saber tooth tiger right now is traffic. Whether your boss is going to yell at you or not, missing a deadline, your reputation at work, having an argument with your spouse, bouncing a check, stressors. Real life stressors. So we're hardwired in our brain, and our brain chemistry is hardwired to look for fear. So I want you to note this our brains are not wired to look for for successes. Shocking. We don't look for those. They always look for a fear response. With that said, <laughs> with that said, what our brains do, we have the fight flight response, which then signals our endocrine system and our gastrointestinal system, our adrenals, produce um, cortisol epinephrine it's released which produces guess what guys glucose sugar into the bloodstream guess what that does to you right 
So if you have stress constantly, what's happening to your body? Well, it's not shutting down, but what it's doing is it's, it's putting your body through this process. So let's, let's talk about it in terms of a car. If you have a car, and the old you, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, maybe I, sh I don't know if I should, McDonald's as an example, or fast food. And you're shuffling that, you're putting this into your system because your body's your car, okay? So it's already not a great fuel system. And then you're like, all right, you're, you're driving this car like crazy, like, ur, 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 ur. And, you're, and you're running the car constantly. And you're not putting good fuel in it and you're not taking it, you're not really taking good care of it. Is it gonna break down? Yes. yes. Is it gonna have to go to the shop? Yes. Is it gonna get tired? Yes. Yes. So this is exactly what happens to your body. Also, the liver produces more glucose, blood sugar, gives you energy to handle the fight flight emergency that's happening in your body. So when you're not prepared for stressors in advance, then what ends up happening is you have a lot of these issues. So we're also more likely to deal with things in a reactive basis than a responsive basis, right? So you're reacting to negative stressors. You're not responding to negative stressors because you're in shock, panic. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. The adrenal glands kick in you have the fight flight response, the, st the stress increases your cortisol, which we just talked about, and then you have longer physiological or psychological symptoms as a result. So sadness and depression, get out of your normal routine, so now you're off plan. You're not eating the way you used to, you're not exercising the way you used to, because you're off your routine. You go into autopilot mode because of a change in priorities, Emergency status takes over. Does everybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. Are you all with me? Yes. Everybody's awake? Yes. Woo! All right. So what happens? It, reactions versus responses. You have an emotional state of overwhelm. We need to learn how to change our reactions to responses with better tools, with a better system. We are not well equipped to deal with stress long term, nor are we ready to deal with things that come out of the blue. Right? Because the negative stresses are planned. And habits, the habits that you've shifted after surgery can go out the window. Especially, has anybody ever eaten hospital food? Yeah. Right? Do they serve healthy things? Do they give, they do give good choices, but they also give you chicken fingers, hamburgers, french fries. What else do they have? Crackers, <laughs> soda, cakes, donuts, cheesecake. cheesecake. All right, you guys know what I'm talking about. So this is what happens in your mind. You have the subconscious mind and the unconscious mind, or the conscious mind and the subconscious, which is also the unconscious. So your habits and patterns are ingrained. Another fun statistic for you guys. 40% of everything you do on a daily basis is a habit. 40%. When you brush your teeth, when you go to the bathroom, like when you first get up, you have a routine. Most people have a routine. Your automatic body functions are unconscious. All of that stuff is, is unconscious. Your planning is conscious. Your critical thinking is conscious. This diagram says willpower. I don't like the word willpower. I like the word discipline. Because your discipline becomes your habits. Right? Discipline. It's what you've practiced over time. Your judgments, your decisions are conscious. So we're going to talk about how you move from the unconscious mind into the conscious mind and how you create those habits, the positive habits to go into your unconscious mind. So coping mechanisms, behavioral responses. So what happens? 
in the past. Old behaviors. You're reactive. Eating in front of the refrigerator. Eating standing up. Eating in the car. Drive through fast food. You avoid the feelings. How many people, when somebody asks you, how are you feeling? I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. <laughs> Even when you're not. Yep. It's a socially acceptable response. I'm fine. Even when you're not. It leads to grazing, overeating, alcohol, avoidance behaviors, which then can become replacement behaviors. Right? All get you off plan. Your new behaviors. Healthier choices. Sitting down to eat. Taking time to recognize your feelings. Hey, I know that a lot of people after surgery don't want to talk about their feelings. But now is when you've got to deal with them. Right? Right? You don't have to tell me what your feelings are, but who's in agreement that you've avoided the feelings? Right? Talking to someone about your feelings is also important. So I also follow the work of Brene Brown, and she has a great talk about vulnerability. There are gonna be people that you're not gonna to wanna to talk about, talk your feelings about to, and I get that, but if there's, ev if there's every person in here who has one person that they can talk to and be vulnerable with them, that's gonna make a difference. That's gonna make a difference. So having your support group mechanism around you is very important. These things, the, the new behaviors will help you move from a reactive state to a responsive state because you're ready. You have your, your kind of coping skills in place. You have those, those ready, on tap, so to speak. Here's what I see is a big issue. Compassion. A lot of times I'll talk to people about, you've got to show yourself compassion, especially when you're going through something really, really hard. And, and this is where I've got to get personal. Because in early part of this year, in February of 2017, I think it was like the 17th, my father was admitted to the hospital. He had had prostate cancer ongoing for a long time. And they had thought that he might have a bleed on his brain. And the following weekend, he had brain surgery. So we, we went, they were about an hour away, we went and stayed there, and then they said, he's, he's, it's not stopping. He's, he, it's continuing to bleed. So we stayed in the hospital for a week. A week. And um, he, he passed in early March. Thank you. But had I not had my own crisis management in place, had I not known what compassion and kindness for myself was, I would have returned to those old behaviors. And that's what I want to teach you guys here today, is the difference in compassion and permission. The difference in compassion and self-indulgence. Compassion is not self-indulgence. But before bariatric surgery, compassion for me was indulgence, because chocolate, I thought, was compassion. Right? Compassion is being kind to ourselves. It's taking a step back. It's knowing what we need at that time. It's maybe sleeping, right? I went to a talk yesterday, a professional talk, where they talked about the impact of sleep. Sleep is hugely important. Because if you're not sleeping, you're, the impact of stress goes up, right? So what is self-compassion? It involves responding to these difficult thoughts and feelings with kindness, sympathy, understanding, so that you can soothe and comfort yourself. If you don't know how to comfort yourself, if food was the way that you used to comfort yourself, we've got to create new comfort mechanisms. Because that's no longer there. Right? That has gone. And it's not helping you. It's not going to get you to where you want to go. And how this impacts your motivation is huge. Because when you're going through an emotional trauma, emotional overwhelm, what was the one thing that used to be there for you? Food. Food. And it's not there anymore. So having self-compassion increases your emotional well-being, boosts happiness, reduces anxiety and depression, 
and it helps you in the long term. So how do we stay on track emotionally? We've got to know or recognize when we're in overwhelm. Awareness is the mother of change. We can't change anything we don't know about. And if we're on autopilot because somebody's in the hospital or this happened or that happened, we're like, okay, I've got to do this, and then I've got to do this, and then I've got to do this, and then I've got to do this. Does anybody take a break? No? A breath? No. If you're not going to acknowledge your emotions to anybody else, at least acknowledge them to yourself. I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed. Wow, I haven't slept. I only slept three hours last night. Right? Or I'm sleeping in a chair. Call a friend. Talk it out. Family, friend, uh, therapist. I use the vulnerability as courage again because a lot of people are afraid to ask for help. I don't want to be a burden. Oh, if I, if I had a dollar for every time my client came in and said, I don't want to be a burden. I don't want to be a burden. They love you. Your family loves you. Your friends love you. Why wouldn't you tell them what's going on with you? We're afraid of being judged. We're afraid of, of somebody saying something nasty. Perception. Anybody afraid of judgment? Right. So is that, the, is that the big reason why we don't go to somebody else? Yep. What are they going to say? Yeah. They're going to judge us. So write it out. Journaling. I'm a big fan of journaling. I, I know a lot of people that don't like journaling, so I have a strategy for you. This is awesome. <laughs> Talk to you, right? I love journaling. If you're not a writer, get your phone. Go to your voice memos. Record yourself. Record yourself. Wait five minutes, wait till later, listen to it. Listen to the pain in that person's voice. Not like they're you, like they're somebody else. Is that, isn't that powerful? You gotta see things from a different perspective. It's a mindset shift. Because if it were your best friend who were going, going through something, you would give them encouragement. But what's happening in here is, you're not good enough. You're not going to do it. Oh, you're such a this, you're such a that. But when you listen to that in a voice memo to yourself, oh my gosh, if you can see it, like if you, talk, if you would respond to yourself the way you would respond to your best friend, I bet your results would be different. Right? So we've got to also shift our energetic state. Movement, exercise, walk, dance. So this is another good one. Emotion is energy in motion. Emotion is energy in motion. So people in a depressed state, and I'm not talking clinical depression here. I'm talking like situations.